naturally, who wouldn't be who would be comfortable wearing a garment that smells horrible? You know what I'm saying? That's the part that they didn't show. You get so typically. Wow. Everybody go. 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 What's going on, y'all? This is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy Keeney, reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work once again. And I'm here today with a special exclusive behind the scenes video. Now, you guys have seen me on the internet and my vlogs, my interviews, and even reality TV, but a lot of times you guys don't see me at work when I am content creating. I specialize in social media and YouTube videos, which means people hit me up for promos, commercials, special marketing videos, green screens with special effects and crap, vlogs, documentaries, trailers, presentational reels. Today, I'm taking you guys behind the scenes of me working with Spice, the dance hall queen, as she releases her debut album, 10, while being filmed for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season 10. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Let's send this to our friend, V, Bianca. And then once she gets in the room. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? What's going on? This is Oliver Twist here, your nerd boy cutie, always reporting for duty to do the Lord's work once again. And today we are talking to Bianca from Soccer 13 of America's Next Top Model. How many chats does this make, guys? A hundred and what? Maybe a hundred and four, a hundred and five. Maybe a hundred and six even, who knows? I don't know. And for everybody who's messaging me and they're like, hey, Oliver, where are all of those chats? You guys know, you may not, but you guys know I announced a couple chats ago that I'm taking sponsors for people who want to promote their products, services, businesses in my videos now. So I'm just waiting for people like to send over their videos and then I got to do some more editing a little behind the scenes when I do these lives on Instagram and it goes to the cloud, the Instagram cloud. If the live is like over two hours, once I download it, sometimes it doesn't always play. So like, for example, the real video, once it got like to two hours and something, it just stopped playing. So then what I'd have to do is I have to go in to my phone, screen record it, play my phone, put my phone down, put it on do not disturb, screen record it, take that file, send it to myself format it so so it can fit the the original video file it just becomes a whole lot so there's a whole lot of troubleshooting and a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that you guys just don't know about so be patient with me be patient with me be patient with me they are coming they will be coming they will be coming but in the meantime we are talking to bianca bianca is another one that i really wanted to talk to because Y'all know I root for everyone black. Y'all know I've said this before. I root for everyone black. We all root for things that we're familiar with and beautiful black girls, black girls, black people is something that's, of course, very, I'm very familiar with. And I remember when I first saw her on the show, like many of you guys said in the comments, we just knew she was going to go far. Like, we just knew she was going to, like, crush the competition and to see the... Um, what her experience was puzzled me, makes life slightly interesting, makes me slightly unhappy because I would have loved to see Bianca go a little bit further. Um, I just saw somebody down in the comments say they want to see Kaylin tackle four. I need to do a live where I talk about all the girls who've either said no or they've said yes and 
I just never heard from him. Um, just so y'all can know, because I've been feeling so bad for y'all sometimes when y'all be down in the comments and y'all be like, can you get this person? Can you get this person? And I'm like, you know, trying to stay, uh, what's the word? Trying to stay, um, stealthy about who I'm getting next on the live. I'm like, Ugh, they said no, or they said yes. And I haven't heard from them. So anyways, that's a whole other conversation. I'm rambling. Today it's all about Bianca. And I'm so excited to talk to Bianca because I want to get into the things of the things you guys asked <laughs> Amazing questions. Some of the best questions I've seen in a very long time. They were very diverse. They were very specific. They were like amazing. Very proud of y'all. Um, whoever this is, you'll have to enjoy it on YouTube. Bye. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado. Let's get Bianca on in the chat. In the chat. I gave you guys a different angle of my living room. Do y'all like it? Y'all see my messy bookshelf? Messy. <gasps> Hi, Bianca. Hello, darling. How oh. are you? I am good. I'm very good, baby. You are beautiful. Thank you. You are too. I love your energy. I love your spirit. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Where are you talking to us in the world today? So I'm actually in my hometown of South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. That's where I'm from. Um, I made here my base because I really, really like, you know, being in entertainment, you take your personal people very, very serious because those are the people mm -hmm. that you don't get a chance to be vulnerable and transparent with. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm home, South Carolina. I'll be in D.C. next week, though. Popping, moving and shaking. We love to hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be talking to you today because you are a member of the girls that I, I personally want to talk to, I personally want to have conversations with. So I'm so curious to know, like, what what made you finally say yes? Listen, so I watched Eugenia's. Okay. Iconic. Okay, iconic. I watched hers, um, and I got bits and pieces. And then, you know, Camille looks like my sister. Camille looks like my big sister. Um, I didn't know that. Camille and I are like super, super, super close. We're both Howard girls. Um, we're both on top model. Um, and at the, I, the, ironically, um, before I even did top model, we were actually close. Um, she was like, I think you should go for it. So, yeah. I watch Camille's, of course. That's, she's like family. Wow. Small world. Small so world. Dope. Okay. So those two is what? What'd you say? I was looking at people joining my a couple oh months. gotcha okay so those two women motivated oh. you to come do dope you know i got into howard i almost went to howard oh why didn't you the well, this morehouse said yes yeah, so well you know at least it's a it's a hair flip away but it's an hbcu so i love <laughs> and i visited dc after i graduated for the first time in 2017 how did you like Went around the city and I went to Howard. I like I walked on the campus and I'm so glad I didn't go. See, don't do that. What well, do one, it was so many hills. Okay, was, yes, you're gonna get a workout. It was so many hills, and I'm originally from Florida, so we're we're below sea level. Everything is flat. Going to Morehouse with those little hills was a lot for me. So when I, when I went to DC and I saw, I was like, oh no. And the campus was huge. It's a it's a very large campus. It's spread that out. That wasn't too much for me. Well, it keeps you in shape, you know? It keeps your buns good. <laughs> you know, the booty high. It, it keeps mm -hmm. everything good. So, I, I mean, I enjoy my experience. I wouldn't be the woman I am today without DC, without Howard University. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that Howard does teach you, it teaches you life skills. You know, mm -hmm. DC teaches you life skills. Because if you could survive in, if you could survive in DC and make a name for yourself in DC, you can really survive anywhere and some of my best uh friendships actually i was at howard i was still in school when i actually did the show i was it was my junior year it was my junior year in college so i was actually oh, still nice. in school when i did the show um but yeah even some of my my best friendships sisterhood i got that from howard university um definition of sisterhood got it from Howard University, taught me the definition of a network, you know? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be who I am today without Howard. 
shout out to Howard, shout out to Morehouse, shout out to Spellman, shout out to Fist, shout out to Fam, shout out to Florida Memorial, shout out to Tuskegee, shout out to Tennessee, shout out to all of the HBCUs. Yes, 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 yes. That are still in this day churning out yes, top yes. tier, top tier <sighs> individuals in our world. Mm hmm. Now, with all that being said, we have to get into the things of the things, which is America's <laughs> Next Top Model, Cycle 13. Yes. You told me you've seen Camille's chat, you've seen Eugenia's chat. Have you seen the Cycle 13 chats I've done? No, I'll be honest with you, I have not. But I saw some of the comments. They were like, do you, you know, what do you think about, maybe I think somebody said that I was mentioned in someone's, like, interview. I could care less. Oh. <laughs> I did, at this point, I did those Cycle 13 chats. Definitely, if it's not been a year ago, it's mm -hmm. approaching a year ago. And I've done over 100 of them. So, wow. unfortunately, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I usually remember, like, the big, big, like, big things or, like, shocking things or gagging things. So, the fact that nothing's, like, jogging my memory right now, they probably they didn't say anything bad. I don't think so. Listen, and even if they did, I'm not for everybody, and I don't want to be. <laughs> I love it. I love it already. Bianca, before we get into the questions and all of that, tell us why did you audition for Top Model? You talked about Camille encouraging mm -hmm. you, but what about you telling yourself, go and audition? Like, what was that like? So when I originally, I don't know why my, I put my phone back on that thing, but so originally when I did it, I was already modeling. Um, I was mm -hmm. signed to an agency in New York. Of course, I was modeling in D.C. Um, but I just did it to further my career. You know, I just wanted to further my career. Just simple as that. Like, oh, you know, I admire some of the girls. I wish I would have done a little bit more research. But um, I just really wanted to further my career in modeling. And uh, the gag is when I did audition, this is the gag. When I auditioned, the line, it was at the Renaissance Hotel in D.C. And the line was literally wrapped around the block like four times. Mm -hmm. four times and I was with one of my best friends Brene um she's in Texas now but um <laughs> the line was literally wrapped around the hotel literally four mm -hmm. so I got to the front and I'm like oh I'm here to audition so they were like oh the line's there so I went to the end of the line thinking that oh I'm close they were like oh no this is we've been here since 8 a.m I was like oh I'm out of here I'm not auditioning so Bianca Charday went to lunch and then Brene was like, Bianca, you really could make it on the show. You have such a great personality. You have a great look because I had already had a shaven head. And she was like, I really think that you should go. Um, mm -hmm. So Brene took me back to that hotel. I saw some friends at the front of the line and I got in line with them. Well, look at God. That, and it was still a very long way. Even they were at the front of the line because then there was another line inside, like another line to another line mm -hmm. inside. So, yeah, I got in line with them. So, yeah, I guess it was definitely meant to be. Do you remember how soon after that did you get a phone call saying, like, you're going to the semifinals? Uh, I'm, I think it might have been a month. I'm unsure, though. I, rem I can't remember the time lapse, but it might have been about a month or so. I remember where I was, though. My friends and I were going to U Street. It's, like, a popular. We were going to this place called Jen's on U Street, they had like the mm -hmm. best food ever. And I remember getting the call and I'm like, y'all, yeah, I made it to Top Model. And they're like, you're calm. But I was thinking about school. Like, what am I going to tell my professors, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I was and, what was, and what was that transition like for you trying to get school together while preparing to go film a show? So the great thing is two of my classes that I did have, they allowed me to take my finals because it was around finals they allowed me to take my finals early one mm. of them my finals were exempted because i'd already had an a in the class which was great and i did take two incompletes so you know what that means i had to finish mm. that they allowed me to finish the one allowed me to finish during the summer and the other one allowed me to finish the next semester oh, no. don't 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 yeah. that's so nice so i want to know bianca mm -hmm. were you walking into the competition thinking you were going to win, think you had a possibility to win. I know you said you were looking to further your career. Smart. But while being there furthering your career, mm -hmm. did you think before you even got there, like, I need to go in with the attitude of a winner. Like, I need to try to win this. I could possibly win this. 
I, I went into it thinking, okay, either I'm going to win or I'm not. But <laughs> very <laughs> simple. I'm one of those people like, okay, either I got this or I don't. However, um, and, and I say that because I think you have to be pessimistic and optimistic mm -hmm. in, in situations like this um, because all of it's a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there are some girls who have not won that are doing great. There's some girls who have won that are not, you know, they're not, they, they just totally derailed and they, they don't even want to model anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I don't know. I went in it like, cool, this is an experience. I love your attitude. Thank you. So babe. I'm so curious to know when you got there and you became in contact with like the producers, the lights, the cameras, the miking, all of that, all of that production chaos. What was going on in your brain? Did you get anxiety? Were you calm? What were you feeling? So the, the beautiful thing is that I was very used to cameras. So growing mm -hmm. up, uh, my training, my, my original love was actually theater. Um, mm. So I'm very much used to being on, lack of a better word, or some type of stage presence, television presence. When I was very young, um, what was I? But it was, no, I was in, I was in high school. I actually hosted a television show, um, and it was on a teleprompter in my hometown. And it was called Extra Credit, and it um, it was televised on like our local like district channel. But mm. it was a panel of preteens and teenagers, and all we did was talk about issues in our community. Um, so I was very much used to cameras, um, and I had already been modeling. So I was like, oh, this should be a breeze. It's just on national television now. So you walked in already with a clear confidence. Absolutely. I always, you know, I'm a Cap I, I hate to bring in zodiac signs, but I'm a Capricorn. My birthday is December 27th. So Capricorns are typically very strategic, extremely, very, very, we, we think things out. Um, we're very optimistic. Um... And, and, and we're always present. So, I, I mean, I, I came, I was like, you know what? And I prepared myself too. I'm talking about prepared outfits, how I, how I was going to speak. My, I, I was very, very much strategic, very much for it and ready. Yep. Well, I hope you're ready for this because we're about to do a and and Roll Call. a and and Roll Call is where I named everyone who was cast on your cycle, okay. the girls, the talent, and mm -hmm. the judges. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain. Something tells me you're not going to have any problem doing this at all. No. I'm on. I, I, I love it. So the first person who we're going to name, she, and I actually spoke to her. She was a finalist, but then once we got in the house, we were told she left and she would no longer be continuing all in the show. It's Amber DePace. You remember Amber DePace? I do remember her. I actually liked Amber a lot. She was weird, super weird, but I liked her. Super weird and quirky, but I really like. She's a Jesus. We called her. They called her the Jesus freak. I got it. I mean, I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, can't nobody do it for you but Jesus. So listen, glory. Um, I loved Amber. I loved Amber, and she had a very fresh look. Believe it or not, I liked Amber. I spoke to her. I found her. I would love if you watch that interview. Okay. And tell me what you think. Do I, are, are you are you throwing some hints? No, I'm just saying I would love for you to go watch it. And I okay. would love like because she spoke about like she spoke about her um her presentation on the show. She spoke about some of the things she did. She spoke about why she left. So I, I think it just maybe just like in interesting fodder, you know. Okay, I'm gonna go back and watch this. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add about Amber? Nope. I like Amber. Next on the list is Lisa. Lisa was cool. I don't really, she wasn't necessarily memorable. You know what I mean? But Lisa was mm -hmm. very cool. She was super chill. I felt like she had one of those personalities that get along with everyone. Okay. Next on the list is Rachel. Oh, Bambi. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, same with Lisa. A little whiny, though. No, no, that wasn't her. That, uh, Aaron was whiny. Um, same, same. Yeah, same as, um, same as Lisa. Yeah. Next on the list is Courtney. So listen, listen, I actually liked Courtney, but then when I watched the show, I was like, oh, y'all talking about me? 
oh, that's how you feel, sis. So why are you smiling at my face? It was weird. Like, I, I don't, I don't, when I don't, when I don't care for someone, I have nothing to say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not disrespectful. I mean, I, I love you because I have to love you. We're all in the image of God. Some of us are just in the image of his foot or his butt. But <laughs> gotta love you, but I'm not going to disrespect you, you know? But mm -hmm. after when I watched the show, I was like, really, Courtney? It was Courtney and someone else. I think she was talking to talking to Lulu. I mean, I we're, this this happened so many years ago. I could care less. But then I remember feeling like, oh, really? It's kind of messed up. But I did like Courtney on the show, though. I thought she was cool. I did absolutely. Um, next on the list is Lulu. So even with Lulu going back to the Courtney thing. Um, I liked her when we were in the house, you know what I mean? But then when I watched the show, once again, to see there were multiple times where there were negative conversations about me. And I'm like, Lulu, I let you use my shoes. You had all my shoes during that season. How dare you, darling? And then you talk about me. Have at it. Next on the list is Ashley Howard. You know, it's funny. Ashley and I actually had uh, lunch. Was it once or twice? I can't remember once. We talked a few over like maybe a, two years after the show, we did. Um, Ashley was cool. I think she's super talented too. Her voice is beautiful. She has a little oof, on the show sometimes, but um, when I got to really know her, Ashley is a very dope person. And I haven't, everyone else I haven't spoke to, I, I, Laura and I do keep in contact. We mm -hmm. call it, that's my pudding. I love Laura. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just realized why Cycle 13 and the people who've watched me from the beginning talk about Top Model, I always say, like, Cycle 13 is a season, like, I I won't say I remember the least, but it's always, like, foggy to me, and I just remember why. I remember watching this, and three Black girls went home three weeks in a row. I was over it. Oh, I you was over it. You weren't the only one. Person. And I'm not saying it's a race thing. That's not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. And I'm, and I'm also not saying that just because... The, a person is of a certain creed and color that they shouldn't be sent home. But I remember being a young black bunny, butch queen mm -hmm. at home. And I, what year was this? This was 2009. Oh, I was still in middle school. So yes, I was like, girl, three black girls that went home. Oh, I'm not watching this season. I'm over it. And no shade to Sunday. I like Sunday, but I knew Sunday was not going. I knew Sunday was not going to take it home. I knew Sunday Absolutely. was not going to take it home. I Bianca was was a, was a hope and dream of the, of 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 the people, and y'all was over it. I love Sunday though. Sunday was a shout series. out to Sunday. Yeah, and she's so beautiful too. Naturally beautiful, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Next on the list is Kara. Mm -hmm. Um. Super cool personality. Like nothing, nothing negative to say about. Him. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was cool, very sweet, nice personality. Got along with everybody. Dope. Mm -hmm. Next on the list is Ray. Yeah, I liked Ray. Ray gave me bold. Ray gave Ray spoke her mind when necessary. Mm -hmm. I liked. She was a mother as well. She had a daughter. Um, I liked Ray, and I thought she was beautiful, too. Yeah. Next on the list is Brittany. Brittany. What is she? Um, Brittany. Um. Hold the line, beautiful. I don't know. Okay. How many years ago, how many years ago, um, was it, is it for you now? I'm not telling my age. Are you crazy? I'm talking about since you filmed the show. I don't remember. <laughs> Go off. Go off. I'm trying to show you a photo. You remember. Oh, they said the math, girl. The math. M-A-T-H. Oh, Brittany. Oh, Gothica. You know, at first, Brittany scared the crap out of me because... Did you say Gothica? Yeah, she had, she had this thing with with goth with that i don't know <laughs> mathematician. um well i'm not a mathematician um um when i really got the chance to know britney i really liked britney mm -hmm. i really really liked britney I and mean, we were so opposite but we had so many commonalities i really mm -hmm. liked britney yeah 
I remember liking Britney too. I was kind of sad that she went home when she went home. I thought she was going to go a little bit further. She, I liked a lot of her photos. I like Britney's look too. Just Shoot me. I like um, next one is, is Sunday. I love Sunday. Love okay. her story. Um, I liked her strength. I liked her resilience. Like even just talking to there, there was a lot of conversations that weren't, excuse me, televised that Sunday and I had, but they, she's an amazing person. Her, her spirit is so beautiful. Yeah. I'm so proud of her and everything that she's doing. Where she, is she in just, she's still in Japan right now, I believe. She doing absolutely. her own thing, running her own business, got her own online social media content thing going on. Shout out to Sunday. I'm very I proud love, of Sunday. love her. They did do Sunday Dirty, by the way. I was looking at people. Where, where are you reading the comments at? Do you have like your computer up? My other phone. Popping. Because cause when, <laughs> when you a businesswoman, you got two phones. Absolutely. Let it let it be known. The next on the list is Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Oh, I'll Jennifer, the Jen. winner. Wait, no, Jen didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Nicole won. Oh, Jen. Oh God, Jen got on my nerves doing that show. Most of the really? time. Really? My nerves. Like I remember, was it her or someone? They tried to do like a chore sheet, and I'm just like, everybody, just clean up after yourself. I ain't, I'm not about to be on nobody's schedule. Mm -mm. I haven't, I haven't, and the thing is, I haven't seen Jen. I haven't talked to her. A lot of the girls I haven't really talked to. Um, but I remember on that show, she got on my nerves. And I'm sure I got on hers too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> Next on the list is Erin. I liked Erin. Whiny. Oh my gosh, she whines. Oh, gosh. But Erin was cool. Erin was cool, but she just whined so much. But she was super cool. I liked Erin. Now, I don't know how true this is, but the people out there who watch told me that I think Aaron had appeared on another show discussing Top Model, and they asked her, would she ever appear on this? And she was like, no, I can't remember the reason why. But when I was going through the questions and I was like watching it a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, watching it back, I think Aaron probably was like one of the ones who probably got like a villain edit. And since these interviews involves a lot of the fan um, interactions. I wonder if that's what scared her off a little bit. I but wonder. this is the thing, with any reality television show, and this is why even when I do watch some reality television shows, you have to understand that they have to create a narrative for everyone, you know? And and now, like, when I went to school, I'm, I'm a journalism, you know, major. And then mm -hmm. I'm in politics as well now. And so everyone has to have a narrative, even in life, like, you know, mm -hmm. so your likeness belongs to, to that network, you know, your likeness belongs to that network because they have to make a storyline for you. They have to like, who are you? So, you know, mine, I was just this super strong and I'm not soft, but that went with my storyline. If you, if you pay attention, like Ashley, she's a dancer. So now her pictures, she looks too much like a dancer, you know? But that went with her storyline because she was a dancer, you know? So I think you have to just take it as a grain of salt. And I think when people watch reality television, they have to take that as a grain of salt as well. Um, that a narrative has to be created for you. So either you own it. Like, I, I can tell you one person who has made a, has done a great job at the negative narrative or villain narrative. NeNe Leakes has done a phenomenal job. Listen, Tiffany Pollard, you know, New York. She's done an amazing job at creating, you know, although she was a villain, had this big personality, but look, I mean, look at them now, you know, um, you have to own it, whatever it is, just own it, whatever. And, and honestly, who cares? Who cares? Ultimately, ultimately, at the end of the day, and to anybody who's watching this, if you're interested in reality TV, my biggest advice from doing these chats as well as doing reality TV myself I think it's important to suspend all expectations when you join these types of shows, especially competition shows. You have to suspend all expectations as well as have a strong, strong, strong hold on who you are as a person. Yeah. You have to know exactly who you are. And the third thing I would say is you have to have a mindset that once you see what these people are going to present you as, have a business mindset to say either we're going to go with this and make some money or we're going to implement this to change the narrative to make some money. That's what but I'm saying. Whatever it is, just own it. Own it. Own it or sell it. Mm -hmm. Own it or sell it. Oh, oh, that's a t-shirt, honey. Own it or sell it. Yes, Ooh. damn. <laughs> yes, baby. Um, next on the list is Laura. 
She was cool. <laughs> horrible school. Okay. Like I put her in the same boat as Rachel and Lisa. She was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then lastly, the winner, Nicole Fox. Probably one of my favorite people. Yay. Between it was Nicole, um, Nicole, um, Laura. Love Laura. Love her to death. Um, Nicole, Laura, and Sunday were two of literally my two favorite people mm -hmm. um, during the show and after. And, I, and I'm saying that, like, um, it, we've all matured, hopefully. We've all matured. But, you know, I thought I bonded with some of the girls on the show. And then, you know, watching it, you're like, oh, y'all really didn't like me. Okay. But they were the most consistent. Like, consistency is, is, is so key to me. Mm -hmm. so key to me. Very essential. Um, I also spoke to Nicole almost over a year ago, almost. She did a very honest interview where she was very, very, very honest. And I think people who um, mm -hmm. saw one thing watching her on the show would get like a whole different um, idea of her, her thought process, her motivations from watching her live. She was very honest, like very vulnerable, very honest. Um, if you haven't watched it, um, Bianca, I think you should, because it's really good. Really, really, really good. I definitely, I definitely will. Next on the list is Miss J Alexander. So I love Miss J, and what I found out during the show, Miss J has roots in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I think it's his mother or so much grandmother, so much from Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, loved, loved. You know what? Honestly, I'm a, and I'm and I, I'm. I mean, oh yeah, I can definitely say what I want to say now. Um, I think about that <laughs> NDA, honey. Um, I wish the the I, I wish. And I know with, when viewers see the show, there's this misconception that we spend a lot of time with Tyra, that we spend a lot of time with the judges. Like we see them at panel and that's it. And at our photo shoots and the photo shoots are like this, you know? Um, I wish we had more time with the panelists, you know? Like some type of more in-depth conversation, mentorship, one-on-one -on -one sessions. But Miss J was by far one of my favorite. I used to look forward to seeing Miss J. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next on our list is Mr. J. So honest. We had the best conversations about eating clean. Loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was it working with him on set? Good. Great advice. Great advice. Great advice. Great advice. Good coaching, too. Next on the list is Nigel Barker. He was cool. Very, very, very level headed. Super cool. And last but not least, Tyra Banks. She's cool. <laughs> I love everybody's getting this. They're cool. They're cool. I mean, but you know, I like I said, I wish there was. I wish there. You don't know her. You we don't. Yeah. Like we. Yeah. And and that's 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 the God honest truth. We don't know her. You know, mm -hmm. we don't. Bianca, you did that fabulously. I think the quickest roll call I've ever done, honestly, guys. What do y'all think down there? Let me know down in the comments. Yes, ma'am, Bianca, you better knock it out. One, two, three. I'm now we're going to get into these fan questions, which, again, I want to clap it up for y'all out there who submitted questions, both on Instagram and to my YouTube channel. You guys have given some of the most diverse, specific, in-depth, questions for our dear friend Bianca here that I have seen in a very long time and y'all should be very proud of y'all I had a hard time I sound like Tyra I had a hard time picking which questions because ooh, Jesus give me my life oh you're way back I had a hard time picking the questions because they were so good so here we go the first one is from Jay Romero AJ Romero from YouTube he is asking, I couldn't stand that they made you guys wear flat shoes to panel to emphasize oh. that you all were quote unquote petite. How did you feel about it? Hated it. <laughs> hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Absolutely hated it. And I believe some of the other girls did say that was like a directive they gave y'all that y'all had to wear flats. Yes. yes. Absolutely. That was literally a direct thing. You must wear flats. Yep. Yeah. It's Antium underscore pot lead em underscore smize tooch bussy underscore. Bussy. <laughs> Girl, every time I see if there's a screen name come across, I just want to just, I don't oh, know, bussy. swallow. <laughs> the guy Swal is. 
A and T M underscore pot lead them underscore smash to each underscore busty. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did um, he say? They were asking, have you seen any of my other lives with contestants Laura Jan, Sunday, and Nicole? Our friend has already said, no, she hasn't seen any of them, but I have encouraged her to watch to watch them because they are really good. 13 really gave me some chance. I definitely will. Just put it on in the background while you, you know, cooking. Can you cook? Baby, yes, I have a recipe book out. Yes, yeah, shameless plug. It's called The Stylish Taste Bud. Who said models don't eat and cook? I also have aprons out. Um, food, fashion, and philanthropy. Those are my three favorite things. Um, yeah, so you can follow. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see it in my bio as well. So it's The Stylish Taste Bud. You can order my recipe books. Mm-hmm. So I'm this southern. is the beauty. No, go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. I'm southern. I'm southern. This is the beauty about going to HBCU. When you go to HBCU, you know the importance of milking every second and moment and being ready for anything. You see how mama slid right in? Plug it. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tell them one more time where they can um, find it. If you go in my bio, follow me on Instagram. And if you go to my profile, you will see um, where it says the stylish taste bud. And that's where you can go to my books. And if you... um, Go to my website, thebiancacharday.com. You can purchase them there as well. So, yes, while you're cooking, girl, just put on one of the chats in the background and just get, you know, get I your cookies. I just a vegetarian lasagna, honey. It's cooling. It's on the stove. So good. Mm-hmm. I would lo- I want to cook now. All right. <laughs> Let's together. That's in another day. Let's do yes! it. Yes! Kimmy Rowe is asking, this was the first season with only three judges. Were you disappointed Paulina wasn't there? Um, so, I did. I would have loved to see some of, you know, you know who I was, I was hoping to see? Naomi. Oh, but girl. I know. I, I was hoping. Girl. girl, I tried it. Tried it. Were you? Tried it. Were you serious? Were you serious? You really? I was dead serious. I was dead serious. I love. I love Naomi, honey. Naomi gives it, and she's still giving it. Uh, But I was hoping to see more models. You know what I mean? Like you know, models that paved the way, especially for uh, dark girls, for black women. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was hoping to see more. I'm not saying that any of them weren't icons, because all of them are icons. You know, within their arena. However, I wanted to see more icon, like, like, you know, people from the Beverly Johnson era, like what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, you know, people that really paved the way, Peggy Dillard, who's from South Carolina, by the way, um, I wanted to see more of those, you know, people who paved the way for Tyra. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to see more of those people. Absolutely. Starting with uh, Naomi. <laughs> I love Naomi, though. Oh no, Naomi's I just saw Naomi walking for I think Alexander McQueen the other day and she's still so beautiful and it's like what is she doing to keep to stay so young? Like is she engaging in that um which I know, let me not say that I don't want Illuminati come to get me. But you know, the things that keep you young. She looks young and all the other girls that came after her are fading. No shade. No shade. I ain't saying no names, I'm just saying the girls some of the girls that came after her are fading. And she's still the supreme. She, she's, she's so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I literally <laughs> look at her pictures and I zoom in like, oh, what is she doing? If she tells me to put cow manure on my face in a serum, I'm going to do it if I look like that at her age. Good luck on the cow manure. I don't think I'm putting cow manure. Oh, you know, you'll be all right. You'll live. You're not going <laughs> to X Flying Sparks 13 S is X is asking, did she like the theme of the house with all those candy stuff? No. I'm like, we are grown. We are not kids. It was like welcome to Candyland. No. Adrenochrome. Yes, that was the word I was trying to say, but I didn't want to say somebody else said somebody said adrenochrome, but listen, listen. Come around here, bitch. You walking you walk it. Hey, leave me alone. Listen. Mm-hmm. Exit. Scram. Go home, Roger. But but you didn't like the candy house. Yeah. I, I, and then I'm not a candy eater either. Mm-hmm. So candy's not, you know, my thing. Mm-hmm. But the house was beautiful, though. Oh, my God, it's such a beautiful house. Where did you guys film again? I want to say it was in it was in Calif- It was in L.A., but I can't yeah. remember what part of L.A. Don't don't quote me. I can't remember what part. Gotcha. 
Um, next question is from Dragon J27. Love this and you. Talking about you, girl. What were your thoughts about the baby pictures photo shoot and how did they select your baby pictures? So um before you're on the show, they asked you to send they asked us to send pictures, like baby pictures. And so they just they actually chose the picture out of all the baby pictures that you chose, they chose the picture in which they thought that they could kind of, you know, mm -hmm. take. And so that's the baby picture that they chose. And it was me and my grandmother's um, shoes as a baby. So again, remember I said earlier, 13 is the season that I kind of like, it's kind of foggy. So I remember when I was going through your photos to refresh my memory, I saw your baby photo and I said, girl, this woman better work in this door pane, okay? Yes, Mama is bent over. Mama is looking directly in the, in the, in the, in the camera, even down to the foot even coming out of the heel ever so pointed and perfectly and then i was watching an episode of using the bottom two i was like wait what happened what was that experience like for you how was the photo shoot first of all okay so this is what i want people to also understand the majority of the things that actually happen on the show they aren't even televised and so what was not shown um and the reason that i was in the bottom two it wasn't because of my photo it was because I was complaining. Now, what was not shown that, uh, was it, whoever the wardrobe. I know you guys are enjoying this video, but we need to take a little break to get a word from our sponsors. Hey there, little black boy. Are you trying to figure out how to get your bag without being one of the hustlers and movers on TV, but you don't know how? Come learn business from me, a degreed CEO. Follow me at What You Know Quan and follow my podcast at Straight Facts TV, where you can learn how to get your money right and how to do business. Looking forward to seeing you soon. I can't remember the wardrobe stylist. Um, the the bodysuit that I had on was not cleaned when she handed it to me. And it, it wasn't cleaned to the extent of it had body odor on it. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, up under the underarms. And so if you pay attention, when I got on set, I was like, it stinks. Like, so what they didn't show was she trying to clean the underarms in the spot that it was stink and putting it over a fan. And so naturally, who wouldn't be, who would be comfortable wearing a garment that smells horrible? You know what I'm saying? That's the part that they didn't show. You get so typically, wow. if you, there's a lot of backstories to things that they don't even show, right? And so that was something that was not shown. And I'm like, how do you not? And when I watched, I was like, they're really not going to show why. Once again, a narrative has to be created. I wasn't chronic complaining about anything. No, this garment smelled horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing another um, piece of fabric someone has soaked themselves in, all their thoughts, dreams, Literally. conversation. And I really want to say that, like, if she had just styled something, I want to say it was something like a, of an acrobat. It was, I can't assert, I can't remember, <laughs> but a circuit. It was, no, she because she was a traveling stylist. She, uh -huh. like, she said, I'm so sorry, I thought I cleaned it. And I was like, this needs to be stained, cleaned. Like, it was, ugh. I remember this like it was yesterday and I was so upset when I got on, you know, to on panel and I'm like, and I, I did I say it on panel? I don't, I, I can't remember if I verbally said it um, because uh, once again, everything isn't televised, you know, mm -hmm. everything is filmed, but it's not televised, but that part of it was not shown. I didn't go and cry to complain as a model. If they tell you to put on a trash bag, you wear it and you wear it well. Whether you like it or not, you're a human clothes hanger. You're being paid to do a job, right? So it wasn't so much I didn't. It wasn't about me not liking it. It was just, is it sanitary? You know, right? That's what it was, and nice. that's why. So, but how how it was portrayed was though as though I was like chronic complaining, and that was definitely not the case. So, was the fact that you were wearing dirty clothing ever discussed that panel like hey Bianca we heard you were complaining did you did you get the opportunity to say well it wasn't that I was complaining it was that I was just uncomfortable wearing soiled garments um I believe I told Mr. J that I was like the garment smells like and it wasn't like it wasn't it was oh you know as a model you're not supposed listen if y'all tell me to go put on leaves from out out the door I'm gonna go put it on but 
this to me in my mind this doesn't seem sanitary you know like it's, i'm just saying i even even after the sh like my years of modeling i've never worn a garment from a designer that smelled years in fact you know they typically dry clean as a model you're not supposed to wear perfume you know what i mean um with designers clothing i never i i never had that experience um so it was weird to me so but you know once again you watch it and it's like oh i guess this is a part of my narrative you know oh well i have a comment from sailor poon oh no you're fine this is a comment from sailor underscore poon um and there and they said did you peep the double standard from your first photo shoot when a pretty white girl hunches and does the angry face, she gets called a high fashion hunchback or mm. something cringy, yeah. gets first call out and becomes a front runner. When mm -hmm. you did it, you almost went home. Was it something that crossed your brain? You know what, then it didn't cross my mind. You know, it, it didn't cross my mind then. But when I watched the show and when I, and I'm gonna be, I, didn't, I don't even feel like, I, I don't even think I watched my entire season because being the how can I say this being a part of it and then watching it and then and I don't know maybe because I me having a journalism background and you know and in, in you know and in, in working in television the power of editing oh my god Jesus but once again everyone it, there has to be a narrative created and and that narrative of the angry black woman that's pretty much that's kind of universal it, it's very much universal um, and not just with modeling, you know, mm -hmm. corporate America. It's 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 very much universal. It it sucks, but it's very much universal. But it, then it didn't cross my mind until I watched it. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait. Now, Jiggy Graham mm -hmm. is saying you mentioned during your audition that you shaved your head as a sign of freedom from domestic violence. What else did you do to heal? And what would you suggest for others struggling to get out themselves? That is a great question. So, yeah, I think for me, I'm an extremist, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I say this because I, I, as, as, as humans, especially as women or as, as creative people, healing is also cyclical, right? Um, I went to therapy, but therapy also, and, I've, and, I, and I still go to therapy. You know, just being just being real with you. You're not crazy for going to therapy. Um, I think everyone needs some couch time. Um, yeah, and I, and I have insurance too. I mean, and yeah, I'm gonna use this insurance. Uh, <laughs> but um, in saying that, in, in 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 therapy, you learn your triggers, and you also learn what is it about. And not that you you, you forgive yourself, not that you necessarily did anything wrong, but what is it about me that I feel like I have to stay in this and or tolerate this behavior from so, from mm -hmm. someone. Um, and it, it helps you address those things and, and, and going to therapy and addressing uh, trauma, you then you're able to address things that are, you know, in the past that you never even thought was a problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or you didn't even think that, uh, you're, you know, these, these experiences in your past have affected your current reasoning as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, and so that means childhood trauma, you know, um, past relationship trauma, you know, healing, you know, relationships, romantic relationships, what about friendships, you know, um, things with parents, generational curses. There, there are so many levels. There's a plethora of, of, of layers of trauma that, um, and, 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 and for me, just being honest with you, for me, I got, uh, because I had, I had daddy issues, you know, typical black girl, and, and I'm not going to say it, it, it's very prevalent within the black community um, for us to not have a father in the house for whatever reason. OK, um, coming from a single parent household. And by the way, my father and I are, are great friends now, but um, I had daddy issues. And so I think sometimes you get any level of um, authoritative attention. You get that confused with love. And we believe everything and anything when our hearts are hungry, even if it's a lie, because it feels good, you know, mm -hmm. at that um, and I still struggle with that sometimes. And I'm okay with saying that. Um, that's a part of me that's the, once again, healing is cyclical. It comes in cycles. Um, but I did that. I went to therapy, anything that made me feel new. And, and, and within my healing also, I also changed my environment. Um, 
that that's saying like a flower, if a flower, or it, for instance, if, if a plant isn't growing, what do you do? You change, you change where it is. You know what I mean? You change it. If I need to put more sunlight in it, if I need to add water. So I, I surrounded myself in environments and around people that I was going to grow and that nurtured me. Um, I surrounded myself around people and places that spoke to my silence because I'm not one of those people. You're not going to see me. If you notice, I don't, I'm not going to sit and cry about things because it is what it is. It happened. There's nothing I can do about it. Let's address it. Um, let's address it and move on. Um, so yeah, I did all of those things and cutting my hair and I've cut my hair twice. I just shaved my head in April. You know, it's a good weave. You like it? I am about to say, girl, it grew back so fast. <laughs> girl, yes, it. it's a great weave. I, I model for this hair company. Love, mm -hmm. love the company. Um, great hairstylist. And you know what? Whatever you do to make yourself feel brand new. If you need to go, if you need to go shave your head, if you need to break up with that girl or that boy, or if you need to change jobs, do what you got to do. Because we are dead, you know, longer than we are alive. You know, we get one time to live this in this form on this earth, right? And the form that I am. We get one time to do this, and I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to dance like no one's watching, and happiness, and my happiness, is expensive as shit. And I take it serious. So, yes, do what you got to do. Heal. Heal, honey. There's so much power in healing. And sometimes you got to accept an apology that you'll never get. All that needs to go on a t-shirt. That was so great. I'm looking at the comments. Thank you so much for that education and that vulnerability. I really do appreciate that. And as someone, um, guys, y'all know what I went through a couple months ago with, you know, my breakup and dealing with family and friendship issues. Everything she just said is 100% the truth about what you got to do to heal because some of the things that she was saying, I was identifying with it and... I'm like, I, it, it is, it is, it is a thing. Everything she just said, um, take note, rewind, listen to everything she just said, because it's, it's, it's a Fendi fact. It is a freaking Fendi fact. Is she still here with us? It's swirling. Oh no, let me take her off and then see if I can get her back on. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's see if we can, um, we can, oh, yeah, there we go. Tara, we bind you, bitch. Get your ass on. <laughs> yeah, she's back. Oh, I'm here. I don't know what she's happened. Back. Sorry, darling. No, you're fine. I was talking to you. A friend of mine yesterday and they were asking me about um being spiritual and just like you know about my spirituality and i was telling them going piggybacking off you saying you need to go to therapy not even if you have an issue but just going to therapy to talk about things it's called maintenance it's called right. maintenance and yes. i use i use the example of um exercising and eating correctly Day one, eating a cheeseburger, you're not going to see it. Day two, day three, nope. day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, maybe day 10. It probably may take you until day 30 to see, like, dang, all those days where I wasn't seeing nothing. Now, I'm, I, I can see the weight. I'm getting tired. My cholesterol may be up. Then it's the same thing when it comes to um, spirituality and emotional maintenance. You have to just keep a daily type of thing going on because we experience so much, like you said, with not only love and relationships, but friendships, family, that builds up over the years. And then we come to a place where something happens and we're like, how did I get here? If we start doing that daily work with ourselves, I just saw someone down there say mental management, managing ourselves will that 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 healing that you speak about will be able to come into that so much quicker and it'll be such a, a easier process for us. Absolutely. And the thing is when you go to therapy, you're, you're like I said, you're able to address your trauma. Like addressing mm -hmm. trauma is huge. Like sometimes we don't even know that we have trauma. Like, or, or, mm -hmm. you know, or seeing, or, you know, how you see, you, you end up dating the same person or you have the same issues more than once in a relationship. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Girl, I was just talking about this yesterday. Yes. Well, me that's attracting the same type of energy. Mm -hmm. because like, I know I'm not abusive and I'm not a fool. I can't be <laughs> when triggered. But in, in saying that, like, what is it about me that is attracting that same energy and that person, right? 
hell, I haven't healed because there's a part of me that still needs that. And there's a part of that energy that needs my non healing. Mm -hmm. So when you address that trauma and sometimes, you know what, that solitude is so important. Just being by yourself, like being literally just by yourself and learning to love on yourself. It is so, oh my gosh, it's so important. The clarity yes. that you get just from being by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Oh, girl, that's this is a whole nother law. This is a whole nother law. I'll get lost in everything you think. I'm like, yes, yes. Do you have trauma from Anne? Uh, I'm literally waiting from for top my model. Um, <sighs> um, I wouldn't call it trauma. I would say as, as someone, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, and I'm going to say this in a way that, one, I don't want to ever be blackballed. Two, I don't want to ever be looked upon as bitter because there's nothing bitter about about me with Top Model because I'm grateful for the experience. It gave me an amazing platform for advocacy. Um, so and I believe that as a when you have a platform, it is your responsibility and you are required, you know, to to bring people to where you are. Um, yes. And and I, I do feel like, you know, it is in it is ex an extremist conception that um we're being mentored after the fact like you know how many times that people are like, oh my god do you still talk the tire and i'm like we don't no i don't i don't know we i don't they have we don't talk to any any of them so i do believe there there needs to be some type of post mentorship um for for those type of platforms and that's and that's any of them and i'm gonna tell you why so most you go to the show right um the show airs you're instantly made a celebrity okay you're instantly made a celebrity right but you don't have no celebrity money you can't go back to doing the same things that you can't go like i remember my my show was on air and i remember trying to get on the train in in dc by myself i had to literally like go into the the office like at the at the metro and get one of my friends to come pick me up because it was oh my god that's bianca from top model like you, you can't do the, your, your life is never the same again for at least for a while. You know what I mean? Or uh, going just basic things, but you don't have any celebrity money. You don't have, I was a college student. You don't have any money to hire no driver. You know, you go back to this regular life. There needs to be some type of post mentorship or something post, you know, when you give someone a platform, like, what do I do with this? You know, teach me how to milk this cow because I have no idea, and that's where a lot of us fail because it's like, okay, I have this, so am I supposed to just get free stuff? <laughs> you know, get free clothes, free makeup, and host events and stuff? No, there's so much more to it that can be done, um, that should be done, but you don't know, you know? So that's all I'll say, you know, as far as the, tra I wouldn't call it necessarily trauma, but I wish there was more at that time luckily i had you know I, I could still and i didn't go back to my agency for another two years but i had a school to finish i got my degree um there needs to be some type of training or mentorship or some type of pr set up to help us kind of guide us through that process because it is difficult sometimes you know you're like i said you're made a celebrity literally overnight and then you don't but you don't have no celebrity money that's difficult in itself to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. Then people, they hold you here and you're like, yo, no, I got some of the same issues you got. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna pay a bill, you know? Like it's, it's, it's you're still normal, but your life isn't normal. And how people view you is not normal at all, you know? So I, I do think there needs, and that's why if you see a lot of those girls that some of us, and especially as models, there's drugs involved. Thank God I never did it. Um, drugs, alcoholism, like it, it's, it turns into something else because it's like, I, I don't know how to cope. And I went, I went through, I think a depression for about a year at the top model, like in, in, in uh, on and off, actually on and off for about four years, because it's like, I don't, well, what do I do now with this? You know, I wish, and sometimes it's like, I wish I can just go back to being normal. Like I could care less about being famous. Give me the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Guys, this interview is shaping out to be so powerful for me. I was very excited because, um, of course, I get to talk to Bianca. You guys had great questions. But Bianca, your, um, your brain and how you're able to articulate these ideas is so great. Do you do, you do public speaking? I do. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the way you're able to articulate these complex ideas in such a... Um, 
easy digestible way is very remarkable like i'm learning from you right now just watching watching talk but this is very great right now i'm enjoying this no i just i had to say that because you know i have a mm-hmm. nonprofit for girls and mm-hmm. i say that and i listen to my girls talk and i'm like whoa i have to help you you know what i mean mm-hmm. if i'm i'm not gonna have a fashion show and then make money off of you without helping you afterwards mm-hmm. like why why would i do that if i have a platform I'm going to help you. I and, I and that is my duty. I am required to. And more importantly, great leaders don't make great followers. They make other great leaders. They make other make yes, yes, yes. Or greater leaders. So two things. Yeah. Um, even though I know that the, that franchise has its own, you know, inner workings and you know, um, problematic moments. I love Drag Race for that very moment because whether you're a girl who won, you came in second mm-hmm. place, eighth place, last place. Yeah. There are so many things for those girls to tap into. Yeah. Again, they have their own obstacles, but the production company, they have drag con, they have tours, they have appearances, they have spinoff shows, they have YouTube content. They have something for those girls to, to do. They have something. Yeah, definitely. Oh, dang it. What was the second thing I wanted to say about mentoring? Yes. I was talking to a friend about... um missy elliott the other day mm-hmm. and i was we were talking i was like it's not only because missy elliott you know made great music and great videos if you look at missy elliott's career she was always tapping into the people who were around her she mm-hmm. was always bringing out a new girl to sing she was always bringing out new talent she was always fresh. working with other everything people. is always fresh she she didn't mind working with lil kim and working with yeah. the brat and working with those girls in in their prime because she being powerful was able to help other people become powerful, yeah. which is why still to this day, if Missy Elliott drops an EP, the internet gonna shut down like it always does every time she does Absolutely. something. She's genius too. She's very creative. Um, Kimmy Rowe wants to know, girl, explain was it what was it like to be in the same room as the icon Super Smile? Girl, Miss Super Smile's got an ice cream now, so I guess the joke is on us, honey. I guess years later. Um, it was cool. You know what I mean? And I say this because, you know, going to Howard and living in D.C., you see celebrities all the time, right? Like, it's just, and that's just what it is. And so I was like, oh, yeah, Tyra, she's pretty. I'm like, oh, she looks like her pictures. Like, that's how I viewed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Starfire 84 RN. Hello, Bianca and Oliver. Hi. Did Aaron really play that hard during the Walmart challenge or was that all production? Oh no, she played hard, honey. She played hard. She 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 was like, I'm gonna win this. Aaron played hard. She did play mm-hmm. hard. Absolutely. What was your um in the moment reaction seeing her? <laughs> Listen. Oh, bitch. Every every woman, every woman for herself. Let's get it. I don't care. <laughs> just don't bother me you keep that over there uh-huh but and you see she didn't but um don't bother me i'll bother you but you do you i would do me uh-huh uh-huh darkest pharaoh was the fight between her and jennifer about the dishwasher as big as they made it out to be i don't remember that <laughs> maybe because i was like as long as it had nothing to do with me just just stay away from me i'm good um, I believe no, they're talking about you and Jennifer. No, no, oh no, 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 me and Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, did you get? Did you get she, Jennifer? That's what I'm saying. With the the dishes and stuff, like that's silly. Like that was always my thing. That's silly. Leave me alone. That's silly because I, I'm one of those people. If I tell you to leave me alone, it's for your good, not for me. <laughs> Girl, leave me alone. You gotta chill. You gotta chill. And that's what it was. Like her, like <laughs> so aggravating. Like just it was she was a borderline control freak. And me coming mm-hmm. from so you know, I grew up the only uh child on my mother's side. Like, so I'm very much independent. I do my own thing. I, I stay out of people's way. And then at the time I was living by myself. You know, I had my own place. I I was a junior at the time in college, my own place in DC, paying my own bills, you know. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm grown. You take care of you. I'm going to take care of me. I don't need anybody to delegate and tell me what to do with my own life, my own dishes. I know how to clean up after myself. You should do the same. And if you have, if you feel like you need to delegate tasks and stuff, you do that with those people, not me, because I'm I'm, I'm not your child. 
<laughs> Darren Christopher underscore nineteen ninety six. Can you give us some makeover teas, which includes yours? So I don't know. The thing is, I didn't know what they were gonna do because I didn't have any. I didn't have any hair. Mm -hmm. Um. So it was my eyebrows, and believe it or not, like my I, my eyebrows never really grew back. Like like the as bushy as you know, in as kind of in the full, not as thick and full. They mm -hmm. never grew back as full from because they had to bleach it once, and then it wasn't lifted high enough. They had to bleach it again, and it burned. Okay. So I end up like I have you know thank God for microblading and micro shading, honey. But um, yeah, that's all. I mean that's all they did to me because I what what were they gonna do? Give me a wig? Which I well, thought they... was crazy because it's like you're taking away the one thing that frames my face, and they already have a very it was weird, but I was like I'll go with it, you know, because you know as a model that's that's what you do, you go with it, you know. But it was weird because I'm like I have where are my eyebrows? Where are my eyebrows? We have this. I have. You know, bright eyes. Um, luckily, I have naturally long lashes, but I have a very strong jawline. Like my face is extremely, you know, you know, like my features. So I'm like, this is weird, but that's the only thing I had to shape my face. But mm -hmm. I went with it though. Where am I? Acid on my face. It felt. Oh, baby, it burned. I was like, Jesus, get it off. <laughs> Do you remember anybody else's experience? I'm trying to remember. Um, I think everybody else kind of liked theirs that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. I can't. I, I can't remember. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Sailor underscore Poon is asking when you saw that god awful blonde wig referring Thank to you. the um horse photo shoot. Did you know your chances of winning were non-existent, even though you were probably one of the most beautiful women there? Listen, not only was it the wrong tone of blonde, it wasn't even like a good wig either. Like it wasn't, you know, it was like Halloween. It was giving 80s prostitute in Vegas at a gas station. Auntie Cisco lemon lemon peel. It was horrible. It was just yeah. Like, I remember saying it like, now y'all know this is not gonna look right on me. You know what I mean? I remember saying it like, y'all and you know, and this is, I think that moment was when I kept realizing, like, and I, I remember thinking back on it, I was like, yeah, everything, like, if, if you notice, even girl, girl, girl. <laughs> oh, the lights went out, the spirit that came Woo! through. Why would we mind you, girl? Girl, let me not show no more photos. <laughs> the spirit wish. <laughs> Keep it away. <laughs> the Rams. Is it gone? Ooh. Is it gone? Yes, it's gone. Oh. Someone said Kim Zosiak. Definitely a Kim Zosiak Beerman wig. The original Kim Zosiak before she got the good wigs. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's exactly what it was giving. Party City with Yes, Alchemy. Yes, Party City. That's exactly what it was giving. It was terrible, baby. And I remember being like, are y'all really trying to get a reaction out of me? Because I really feel like y'all trying to get a reaction out of me at this point. Because there is no way that anybody thought that their wig was going to look right. Like, it was the wrong tone. It wasn't styled properly. Like, it, you know, it just, it was so many just no's. It was just no. <laughs> um, Ramona. Ramona Antoinette, how do you feel about seeing Ashley and Lulu speaking negative about you when you were opening up and being real and vulnerable with Nicole? You spoke about that earlier. Anything you want to add to it? You know, I could care less. I, I, I understand <laughs> you're going to be talked about. Um, and if, if you're not talked about, you're going to be speculated about. Um, mm -hmm. Like even like even over the course of this, you know how many things have been said about me. Mm -hmm. Like just you, you think people are your friend. Pe women and women are messy. Women are so messy. Like messy. Oh, messy. But you know what? Sometimes it's just like I did what. Mm -hmm. They said what. Mm -hmm. What else I did? Because that sounds kind of fun. Right, right. <laughs> that fun. Tell me more. What else I did? But you know what? Then I, I'm not gonna lie. When I remember watching it, being like, "Well, Lulu, you had on my shoes that day, you know, and you talking about me. That's weird." Um, but hey, that's that, that's what people do. People are two faced. You take it as a grain of salt. Move on. You like, I see you. I got you. I see you, and I'm, I'm done with it. Like, cut you off. 
BJ Bond is asking, was there more to the situation when Sunday told you that Courtney spoke about you that um, that was not shown to viewers? And did you ever reconciliate with, um, reconciliate, reconcile, reconciliate with Courtney after the show? You spoke about it earlier. Anything you want to add to that? Oh, no. I, I, I remember I briefly spoke to Courtney like on and off. But the other thing, too, you also have to realize sometimes is that there's editing, too. Like, I, like for instance, when you see us talking to the screen, right, and you see, you, you might say, yeah, I feel like you, you have to answer in a complete sentence. So if you were to be like, hey, what's your name? Bianca. No, my name is Bianca. Or, those, you know, like you're asking me, how do you feel about Sunday? I feel, well, no, no, she's crazy, right? They're like, no, you have to answer in a complete sentence, right? So mm -hmm. there's someone there asking the questions and you're responding, but you have to answer in a complete sentence. And then watching it and then years, you know, me having a history in journalism, I'm like, oh, so what do you do? You ask me these questions and then you cut to whatever that is relevant. And sometimes some of those things are completely out of order. Like that could have happened two weeks ago. Like, how do you feel about Oliver? You know, I feel Oliver is crazy, but I love him to death. You know what they'll probably do? Oliver is crazy. Cut. There's a scene of Oliver being crazy. Now your narrative is created. You know, you get what I'm saying? So who knows what the, and, and, and this is just. in a diaper. I'm being shady. Let me stop. Lord, I'm this sorry. Is, this is just me being who I am. Who knows if the con the whole conversation was negative? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But that's the portion that they, they had to show. They had to create that narrative. Um, and that's, that's just me playing devil's advocate. Who knows that they probably said something nice after that. Don't know. Wasn't there. Don't care. Um, but yeah. I think you guys' as producer um, was David St. John, right? David St. John was there. I don't remember. Don't remember. He, I, 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 I well, I know he was because Jen and Sunday remember him. He was the guy who put me on TV first. I love me some David St. John. I'm yeah. so mad you don't remember David St. John. What if I showed you a photo of him? Would you remember him then? Yes. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Child, I'm, I'm scared to be showing photos. This is David. Do you remember that man? I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of, yeah. No, I don't remember. Oh. Okay. Sorry, David. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ariel dot Adriana. Did she feel like they portrayed her as the angry black girl on the show? You know what? I think I feel I do feel like sometimes like that the narrative of me, you know, you know, I was in this domestic relationship and I have this strength and I'm not soft and me not feeling like I'm beautiful. I know I'm cute. I know I'm cute now. Um, once again, the narrative has to be created. So I probably was, you know, the mm -hmm. super strong black girl. There's nothing wrong with that, though. I'm, I am vulnerable. I am transparent and, and open when I need to be. I'm not going to walk around like, hi, guys, ah, all the time. For what? I'm not aloof. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you wish they would have shown regarding you, shared about you, included about you that maybe could have given people a more well-rounded Laura and I your personality. Together. Laura and I cooked together a, a, a few times. Laura, uh -huh. my conversations with Laura, us being silly, um, Sunday and I had a few vulnerable conversations, um, heart to heart. Um, there was a lot that could have been showed. But once again, you know, you, you gotta have a narrative in reality TV, you know? Like, I, I mean, I learned a lot. Yeah. Um, Antm underscore pot leadum underscore smile stooge underscore pussy is back asking, were any of the guest judges or special guests during shoots or challenges memorable to you in any way? No. <clears throat> Mr. You said no. No. Maybe Mr. J. My, um, there was, I think it was like a photo shoot. It looked like it was like on a, a playground. Maybe that, but anything else? Nothing was completely memorable. Oh, was this the photo shoot when you guys had to like extend your like make yourself look taller? I believe so. I believe it was. That, <clears throat> that was a nice photo of you. Thank you. Appreciate that, babe. Jiggy Graham is saying Tyra said you could model the verb, but you were not a model the noun. Your thoughts on her statement? Everybody has an opinion. <laughs> I 
I mean, there are plenty of people that tell Tyra no before. What's going on, y'all? Hope y'all are enjoying. But we gotta interrupt this right fast for a word from our sponsors. told me no before someone told me yes everybody has an opinion there was another comment i didn't ask it but i find it pro appropriate now the comment said and i'm paraphrasing that at your elimination you seem so calm you seem so serene mm -hmm. was it that you already knew that you were gonna go <laughs> were you accepting whatever it was that was gonna come tell mm -hmm. us yeah i knew i knew when i was gonna be eliminated i didn't even turn in my grocery list that day I felt it. You, I just knew it. Do you remember any of the signs that gave you indication? Certain questions asked during production. Um, like some of my buttons that were pushed. Because after a while, like I remember, you know, in, in, in this a little bit background, like when you're asked to do these shows, right? You meet with a, uh, I can't remember if it was a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you, you, you take personality tests. Um, you you meet with a therapist you go through all of these questions right and i remember i, re I knew i was going to be cast because i remember we were putting holding rooms in, in the they you know the first episode when there's a bunch of us right and we're putting holding rooms and they just record our conversations and our interactions right i remember i floated a few times i'm like why y'all keep taking me to different rooms right i knew i was going to be cast and there are certain things on my list all of all of my no's were, were pushed. I didn't like people who didn't believe in God. Um, I hated books. I can't, was it, was it a <laughs> that I bunk with? Like somebody had a pet spider in my room. I'm serious. Like they had a whole spider. Um, was it a spider? It was some type of bug that they found out. Let me back up. I can't, I think they found it outside or something. And I was like, you're really going to have that in the room? Like it was, I can't, what, I can't remember what it was. Was it a grasshopper or a lizard? It was something. All of, I didn't like dirty bathrooms. I don't like bugs. I remember coming home from panel and there were ants all over my suitcase. How did those ants get there? You know what I mean? Like, how did the ants, you know, or I don't like people touching my things. Then my cream of wheat was just randomly missing. It was just little things like, like, okay, is this supposed to be a reaction? You know, like, are you just trying to get a reaction out of me? Like, it was mm -hmm. little things that I was just like, yeah, this is strange. Like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. And some of the questions that were asked, um, during confession, um, was it conf or whatever it's called? Um, Your interviews in the interviews at the end. Like I remember, I remember. I believe this was after the Walmart challenge that I can. I'm trying to remember, and I remember Ashley told me, you know, Aaron did this, she did this, and I remember we were in the limo on the way back, and I remember um, Aaron was upset, and I said, Aaron, because. I think, I can't remember what Erin did to Ashley. I can't remember, I can't remember. And, but I remember her saying, um, I said, Erin, just apologize, get it over with. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. I remember Ashley saying, well, be, no one tell Bianca to open her mouth. Well, why did you tell me then if you don't want me to say something? Let's address the <laughs> elephant in the room. Who wants to sit and be comfortable, uncomfortable? Tell the girl you apologize, say what you got to say and be done. That's my personality, even now. Let's address this, let's, I'm confrontational as hell. You know, we're gonna talk, I, I ain't about to be uncomfortable. No, no, we're going to talk about this. And I'm going to the source. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to spread rumors. I'm not going to speculate. What's up? Let's talk. Like, what is it? That's my, even my personality to this day. Um, and so there were certain questions about that. Like, after a while, I'm just like, yeah, I don't really care. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, and there were other things that I, 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 I won't say right, I won't say right now, but what I do after I win my first Oscar, I will definitely, um, yes, yeah, I would definitely d tell you how I really knew when I, I was going to be eliminated. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So if 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 me if, if I didn't know I didn't know if it, I didn't know if it was that obvious that I was. Beyond, like, you can't do that to us now. Everybody's everybody's spiritual vagina just got thick now because. Let it can you just tickle it just a little bit? Just tickle it just a little bit. No, let it salivate. Let it marinate. Oh my God! Where's the napkin? Okay. So yeah. Um, just, um, yeah. So the, that I did know. I, I had a feeling. I, I kind of felt it. And I knew, yeah. The, the Lost Levi is asking, did you feel your elimination was set up since they made you shoot in profile after being told you need a face-on photo? Say it one more time. The Lost Levi, did you feel your elimination was set up since they made you shoot in, a, in profile after being told you need a face-on photo? I felt that was weird because, listen, like, even some of the pictures that they chose, like, when we shoot, we can actually see the pictures on the screen. And sometimes I used to get my picture, like, you know, like, you know, when you, you know, you have a photo shoot, there's a screen there so that you can see, you know, sometimes see, you'll look over and be like, oh, that was a good picture. Like some of the photos that they chose, you know, sometimes not just with me, but some of the other girls too, you know, I used to like, that wasn't the better picture. You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember it was the, the scarf picture. That was the one with Tyra. I really, listen, I felt <laughs> like, there were other pictures that were better than that one. Just being honest with you. Dang it. Thank you for that. That was definitely a question I was going to ask you. So you, you, you did get glimpses of your photos. Yeah, I mean, you don't see your, you don't, you don't see all of them, but you, but know, you like, can see, when you, mm -hmm. and you can see the screen with, you know, it's, um, the camera is connected to the screen. Mm -hmm. and so it pops up. Pop, it pops mm -hmm. up. So sometimes I, I would look at the pictures and be like, Hey, that wasn't the best photo. You know, like it's weird, mm. but okay. Um, Kimmy uh, Rowe wants to know. Please ask her if she was a decoy and got to travel to Vegas for the next week's photo shoot. No, you go to a hotel after you're eliminated. Did you get to go to Hawaii? No. Oh crap! Would you have wanted to go to Hawaii? I was ready to go back to DC. <laughs> You were over it. I was like, "Girl, get me back." I lost. Let's go. I was like, "Let me." Let, I'm, I'm, I wanted. I wanted to get back to my dog. I had a cute little dog named Chloe. You remind like, me so much of myself. I was like, "Get me back to my dog and my my cute little condo right on Georgia Avenue off, off in, in U Street." Let me get back to my life and my friends. And at the time, I was in. What's that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had. Let me get back to my man. Okay. You had lost. He was ready to press. I was over it. I was like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, AJ Romero is asking this cycle had a controversial race swap when the girls got to Hawaii. What was your reaction to that when you saw it on TV? Did you see it on TV? Yes, I did. I, I thought it was weird. Back then, you thought it was weird. Yes, I thought it was weird. I go to HBCU. Heck yeah, I thought it was weird. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I mean, just get a black girl. You know, I'll be honest with you. I've, of course, there's been greater discussions about it and people say, like, it's wrong, it's wrong. And, you know, I accept people's feelings about it. But in my brain, I didn't understand why, like, why it was wrong. Um, Because at you, first I was like, You just well, are uncomfortable, right? What, you well, you, well, well, this, the show came out in, when I was in middle school. So my brain, you know, I wasn't, oh, look at the little bird, baby. His name is Snooky. Snooky! Oh, I love Snooky. <gasps> and I got a cookie. Snooky, look, it's Uncle Oliver, he has a cookie. <laughs> yes! Oh my God. But I remember being in middle school, and like I told Jen, because Jen was the one who broke, who officially broke it down with me, and I was like, okay, I get it now. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I always thought the show was doing like when they did race swaps, it was done to like to reverence it or like to be proud of it. And Jim was like, yeah, you could say all that, but you're almost treating someone's culture and likeness like a costume. 
and it's it's like it's 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 like you're you're it's almost like objectifying it to to and reducing it down to something you just put on and take off. Like, no, this is someone's life, this is someone's values, cultures. If you want to show respect, let someone from that from that race, that that culture, that this let them do it. Don't make it a cost. I, I, and I was like, okay, I get it now. I got it. Definitely. It's not And I totally agree, yeah. That's that's like me, I don't know, wearing, I don't know, a Nazi uniform. Why would I do that? Oh, God. <laughs> Since you had to go all the way there. <laughs> Just saying, that's, I told you I'm an extremist. <laughs> extreme, yeah, that was very extreme, yeah. Um, couple more questions for you, babes. Yeah. Um, loosen up. Now, this is one of the best screen names I have seen in a what long is time. Girl, it is loosen up my buttons. Oh, Loosen up my buttons, baby. Say oh what my. you do to me. Uh -huh. Come on, pussycat dolls. Has your batch of Cycle 13 experienced the rumors? I think it was from Cycle 18 that the girls were not allowed to look directly into Tyra's eyes if the cameras were not rolling. Oh, we I mean, no, we didn't have that. Now, you could not talk if the cameras were not rolling. It's called, we were on ice. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah, don't, yeah. we don't have phones. You don't have any, you don't have a cell phone. So, you have no connection to the outside world. Um, but, no. Yeah. We didn't have that problem. And uh, you mm -hmm. don't see Tara that much. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, this is from Gary Kelly, 12, 57, 60. Mm -hmm. How long did it take for you to get signed after modeling? I saw that you were with Wilhelmina, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, t tell us about your post ATM model career. So I, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, after Top Model, I remember trying to go to a few agencies because um, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, they're going to take me now because, mm -hmm. you know, the world knows who I am. Brood Awakening. <laughs> um, top Model is, they were like, you should. Top Model is respected as reality TV. Mm hmm. And I didn't really understand it. Then I was like, what do you mean? I modeled on this show, right? They were like, no, you were on reality TV. We're concerned about your credibility now. And when I said that, they were like, you know, when you think about models, do you, when you see these models, you don't know much about them. And that's actually true. That's very true sometimes. You know, you mm -hmm. see pretty girl, that's it. Um, and it took a while, it, it took a while and I, I changed my hair because I was like, this is this is too memorable. I changed my hair and I remember going under the name Dion for a while and not Bianca. Um, wow. Yeah, it took two, two, two and a half, three years. Um, I hosted a lot of events, a lot of events. I hosted so many events. Um, I ended up covering doing red, red, car, red, uh, red carpet corresponding for the mm -hmm. CW in DC and picks 11 for CW. It's uh, called DC Hotspots and we had New York Hotspots. I ended up, um, I was a panelist um, at, at that time. It was BT News and we, it was a digital platform called What's at Stake uh, with Mark Lamont Hill. Um, what else did I do? A lot of my, and you know what, honestly, it, it pointed me in the direction of, of what I'm doing now. Like I've worked for a presidential candidate. I was a national surrogate, traveled talking about advocacy um, a lobby for female reproductive rights now. Um, modeling has been great. Modeling helped put me through college. I did end up signing again to, a, um, I, I ended up going with a talent agent who, who was amazing, a guy in DC who no, longer, who no longer does it. And then I went with another, I had another manager, her name was Sheila Stewart. She actually passed um, in, a, in a tragic car accident um, shortly, maybe a couple years after that. Um, I ended up doing a few campaigns that a Jeffrey Campbell campaign. That's when Jeffrey Campbell was like the hit thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, I did their campaign. I don't know if you guys know Amana told me I'm the face of Amana told me even still to this day. He's a celebrity jeweler, like his jewelry. It's on everyone like Nas X, Jay-Z, is it Jay-Z? No, Diddy, Diddy, um, jewelry. If you look, look him up, Amana told me is also called the Basquiato of metal. Amazing celebrity jeweler. Mm -hmm. Um, another designer, Espion Atelier. Um, she's actually on Essence's platform. She just uh, did the digital platform with the CFDA for Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. um, minority owned. Um, did a lot. Did I, I've been I've been doing Fashion Week even before Top Model, mm -hmm. um, New York, and of course DC Fashion Week. Um, and shout out to DC Fashion Week, by the way. You know, um, 
and, and I say this, um, Ian Williams, who is the director of DC Fashion Week, it's, it's so important to have people in your life who see things in you that you don't. You know, mm -hmm. like when I started out with DC Fashion Week, I was so green to this industry and he took me up under my wing. He's like literally called him my fashion godfather. Um, but he was, a, he's a founder of DC Fashion Week and we still keep in touch and talk to this day. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that was where I started DC Fashion Week. I'm trying to remember what else did I do? I'm signed right now to Slam Management. They're located in Atlanta. So um, I still have modeling, but I'm not, uh, Bianca is a cool 142 pounds. Then I was 120. I got I got these, honey, and I got a little. I'm southern. Um, I'm still small. I'm still a size four. But, so what is twenty pounds, girl? But I got I got my little curves. I'm, I'm thirty two, literally thirty two, twenty nine, thirty five. So, um, you know, I got I got my little body. It's definitely not a size double zero anymore, which I love. Um, I, I, I like my butt loops. You know, mm -hmm. I like my grits. Um, yeah, I, I like my grits. I do. I do. I love my grits. Um, yeah, reading for films. What else do I, I, I do? Uh, I'm like, I have my nonprofit for girls. I'm the lifestyle editor of Monarch Magazine, National Magazine. I host their podcast. Um, what else do I do? I got, you know, I have a nonprofit. I have my recipe book. Um, I advocate for female reproductive rights, state of South Carolina. Um, what else? Uh, I think that's about, oh, I have a, I have a media firm. My media firm, we represent brands. And so we cover for everything digital. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a geek at heart. I develop websites, um, like what my company does, but if they want to work with me, if I have time, I definitely do. I develop websites, um, help build their social media platform, work on their Google analytics, um, you know, increase their um, follow following. Um, what else do I do? I feel like I'm just looking at myself right now. Listen, you gotta, speak. you gotta you got you gotta find multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. I'm recently the area I'm from back home, you know, here in South Carolina, um, my goal, you know, uh with my nonprofit, we own a lot of we own property, we own land. So my goal is to put affordable housing on um those parcels of land, um, and for at risk women, um, at risk females. So whatever their at risk is or whatever their issue is, that I want it to be housing for them. So that's my recent mm -hmm. endeavor. Um, and then what else? So yeah, I hope, you know, moving forward, you know, I'll get on in somebody movie. It'd be casting director, Tyler Perry. I don't want to be butt naked on nobody. Well, if it happens, it happens. But I don't want that to be my first film. I want to mm -hmm. be beating somebody up. I want to be like, I want to be Angelina Jolie bad. That's what I want. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I want. So, but yeah, that about sums up my work. I'm still modeling. Um, How was Wilhelmina? It was short, but it was cool. It was cool. Mm -hmm. The one in Philly. It was cool. It was cool. Mm -hmm. I got more work. You know, I I didn't even, you know that thing, like, you kind of don't know who you are until you really kind of arrive. I kind of, like, fell into, like, the public speaking. Like, gotcha. my nonprofit, it wasn't something I set out to do. So, true story. My, um, my brother was murdered, actually. Oh. My, my, my brother was murdered. Um, gun violence. Um, here in South Carolina, which kind of, my brother was my personal person and he was my best friend. Remember I said, you know, you don't get the chance to have a lot of personal people, you know, and be transparent. He was my person, you know, mm -hmm. and so he was murdered. It kind of just, you know, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm in the height of this kind of like top model stuff. And, and it's just like, yo, this really just interrupted my entire aura. Like it really interrupted like my energy. And so I'm, I came back home shortly after that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's one of the reasons that I made South Carolina my home. And that's why I'm like, yeah, I, I know for sure to keep me centered and to keep me grounded. Like, I, I got to be near my family. You know, mm -hmm. I have to be near my family. Like, I value life before, but literally, like, I talked to my brother one day and he was gone, like, mm -hmm. the next day. Not sick. It was completely unexpected. Like, it, it made me value people around me and my loved ones, friends and family. Like, I tell my friends and my family I love them so much. I love hanging out with my friends. Look, I, li I like a good libation. I like a good kiki with my friends and family. But that's why I'm like that, you know? Because we really, we really could be dead tomorrow. Like, you know? Like, life is so mm -hmm. precious. And so that's what made me come back home. And I, come, I came back home and I had a nonprofit. Well, let me back up. I wanted a group of girls to teach modeling to Oliver. Little group of girls. So I had some girls from where I'm from. And I, had a, I did a summer camp. And I was like, how am I going to do a summer camp with no money? Okay. Like, what is this? You know, I'm going to stop all my supply from Dollar Tree and Dollar General. That was my first mm -hmm. set of supplies. 
Um, and that, that camp that year turned in from 15 little girls to the next year it was 30, the next year it was 45, the next year it was 70. And mm -hmm. we do so much just in, it's an income based program. So I didn't set out to have a nonprofit, you know what I mean? It was, lit it, it was one of those things that I was called to do. And I had mm -hmm. to answer that call. That's why I was saying, you know, if, if you're given a platform, especially to inspire and to change someone's life, it is your job to follow through with that. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with fame. It has nothing to do with being seen. It has nothing to do with creating a platform for yourself. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. And that's how you're going to keep your blessings going. So, yeah, I think that about sums up my life. <laughs> I think with that spiel, this second to last question is so perfect. This is yep. one, this is from, excuse me, one of my um, favorite viewers. This is Vonda Cosmetic. I just like saying that name. Vonda, Vonda Cosmetic. Cosmetic. I love it. Hey, Vonda Cosmetic. <laughs> Vonda Cosmetic. She says, hi, Bianca. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy that I'm making her this the last question. She says, hi, Bianca. I've been following you since the show, and I am amazed at all that you do, and I have become a true fan of yours. Oh. How do you stay so driven and ambitious? I would love a shout out from you two if you're willing. My name is Stephanie. Hey, Steph you? hey girl. Hey, Steph. Um, how do I stay driven? You know, I have days because, you know, I, I have anxiety too, by the way. I have anxiety and I sometimes suffer from depression. I think mm -hmm. if you're in this day and age, I think if you're a millennial, all of us do. <laughs> we just cope with it. Mm -hmm. um, what keeps me driven is my family. Like, you know, the other reason that I went back to school. So after Top Model, I went back to school. I wanted to travel. Like, I, you know, I could have gone overseas. I could have done so many things. Um, and I did. I did end up going overseas like that summer. Um, but it, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was going to finish my degree. I was going to come back later, but what made me hurry up, my grandmother, you know, my grandmother co-signed for my student loans. Okay. Mm -hmm. I owed it to that woman. I owed this. My grandma said, we ain't send you up there for that stuff. You know, girls <laughs> that said, no, baby. No, no. You love me. You know, they, they don't like it. But then when they see you on TV, everybody at church know, all the friends know. I'm so proud of my baby, but you didn't want me to do this. But okay, we're gonna go with Girl, it. Girl, that's my same story, child. We're gonna go with it, baby. We're gonna Girl, go when the money with start it. coming we... in, now everybody wanna clap. Where the money reside, where the money reside, right? So in, in saying that, I owed it to my mother and my grandmother. <laughs> I owed it. I owed it to them to finish school. I owed it to them. And I say that they made so many sacrifices for me growing up to put mm -hmm. me into everything to cultivate skills, whether if it was ballet, acting. Whatever it was I wanted to do, they made sacrifices for me. So I would have to say my family, my mother and my grandmother, even to this day, I am not going to be satisfied until I continue to make their life easier. The older mm -hmm. that they get, I feel like it is my job to make sure that they don't want or need for anything, mm -hmm. nothing at all. And that's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me going. Also, you know, I'm not married yet. I don't have children. Um, and when I do want to get married, when I do get married, no, when I do get married at that point in time, when I do have children at that point in time, I know what type of mother I want to be. And um, I don't want to work much. I want to be very present in my kid's life. I want to be with them. I want to be a wife. I don't want no little tinny bopper bopping around my house with me and my husband and my kids. Ain't gonna happen. No. I, you know, I, I want to be there for my, my, my family. So that's why I, I am putting myself in positions and in places and um, being extremely ambitious so that I am in the right place financially. Um, that one, I'm able to thrive, survive, and have something to offer too. You know, don't know, man, want no broke woman. Yeah. You know, one of the main reasons why I love doing these chats, especially when, I, when we have um, contestants like Bianca, who may have gotten <laughs> a bad rap from the show, or maybe fans are a little disgruntled on how they were presented many years later. Mm -hmm. We get to talk to these folks by way of this boy with a gray streak in his head. No credit to me, but we get to see you guys, the beauty of you guys. I'm sure anybody who's watched Top Model and will watch this interview seeing how you present yourself, what you've been doing, how you speak, how you reconcile certain things, things that you're doing within your life and the world and for yourself, there is no way they can walk away from this having anything negative to say about you. Like, I have thoroughly enjoyed this chat. I am leaving um, feeling inspired. I'm leaving feeling uh, more enlightened. No, you did a great, 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 great 
freaking amazing job. And I hope everyone who watched is currently watching and will watch when it's uploaded on YouTube will leave feeling the same way. And, and, and I'm sure they will. I can't wait to see the comments on YouTube because I know they're going to be like, oh, my God, Bianca is so beautiful. Oh, my God, look at her. Um, I just, I love these redemptive moments. It just, it makes me so happy. I'm, it makes me very happy. And I like... I hope everything that you want to do in life, mama, that you get. But something tells me that you're going to do it. So when that Oscar places your palm, please know the ne No, I'll give me two days. Hit me up and be like, hey, Oliver, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing in this world, but I want to tell you the moment that I knew I was going home. Listen. Because I know the Oscar's coming. I, I, listen, I got you. I got you for that exclusive. I promise. Mm -hmm. I promise. Last, last question. If you were standing before Tyra Banks right now, what would you say? Is this before or after the Oscar? <laughs> give, a, give me both. Well, you know, all, all in, in, in I, I'm going to say this. One, I'm going to say thank you for this experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, I was chosen out of thousands, millions of girls in the United States. They chose was 14 of us. No, 13, 14 of us that were chosen. Um, this experience has created an amazing platform for me. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. Um, it forced me to learn a lot about myself. And it also, you know, realistically, it put me in rooms. You know, I'm grateful for the experience. But like I said, I wish there was more post stuff for preparation. Like you said, you know, there's all the stuff that the girls have for RuPaul's Drag Race for them to do, or they set them up with, you know, to go toward that um, direction. I wish there was more post stuff, you know, or something like a PR firm, marketing firm, something, you know, for us, because I'm pretty sure a lot of, there's so many girls, like, from my, I think all the girls from my cycle are extremely beautiful and talented, you know, and the girls that came before, before that, you know, my cycle and afterwards. Mm -hmm. But some of us would, would be much further along if we had some type of push afterwards, because I think all of us, we have a story, we have something to offer. You know, I'm pretty sure, in, you know, even in interviews like this, you, you get to know us, right? Mm -hmm. And we have more, a little, a little bit more substance than what was shown to the world, right? And that hasn't been displayed, right? So um, I wish there was more post stuff to, to help, but I would definitely say thank you because I was chosen out of millions of girls, like millions of girls. Come on, and, Camille. And it's given me, yeah, Camille's my boo. That's my sister. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it's given me an amazing platform to do what I'm doing now and it's inspiring. And honestly, in my inspi in, in, within me inspiring, I learn a lot about myself too. And it's also extremely healing. So I would just say thank you. You, know, you, you have to be thankful. I, I think in general, a huge part of growth too is always having a spirit of gratitude, even when mm -hmm. things hurt. Because there's always a lesson in everything. So whether it's, if it's betrayal, anything that hurts, um, a blessing, there's, there's a lesson in it. So you gotta be grateful like for everything, the good and the bad and the ugly, because that's life. So I would just say thank you, you know, because I learned a lot about myself and others. Life skills, too. Yep. And then what about after the Oscars and our poem? What are you going to say? I can't tell you that. I ain't got that. <laughs> I, I, I would still, I would still have. Gotcha. A, I, I would still have, and, and, and this, just in all seriousness, I'm I would teasing. still have a spirit of gratitude, though. Yeah. I would still have a spirit of gratitude. I, and I mean that I would still have a spirit of gratitude even after the fact. I would I would even invite her to sit next to me, you know, because I she she would she she gave me a platform, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That that show it did. Let's be realistic. You got to be grateful for everything, because yeah. um, you people ain't got to do nothing for you. They ain't they entitled, don't. as my grandmother said. They entire no one's entitled. They ain't got to do nothing for you. You always want to be grateful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Bianca, I don't have any more questions for you. This is so great again i keep saying this was so great this is so powerful you did an amazing job you did Thank a freaking you. amazing job i hope when i come to washington to see you know but you're in you're in charleston you said right well i'm in columbia i'm based in columbia, columbia south carolina right now mm -hmm. i am um i'm based here so I, I live here i live between here and new york actually so I'm oh definitely yep now when the ice um when the ice uh melts away in new york city I would definitely be in. No, I would no. It's no. It's a. It's a thing. Trust me. I trust me. I would definitely be in New York, twenty twenty two. Trust Come me. On. There. Come on. Come I on. Come on. I would love. I would love to like just talk to you. I just. I just want to pick your brain about things. Like, oh, anyway. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. But yeah, come on to New York. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be in D.C. and back in D.C. in two weeks, and then I'll be back in New York, and then I'll come back home. So I trust, and I, I have to, I have to see my grandma and my family. Like that means a lot to me. Do you have white nails? Well, it's like a mint green. It's the, you know, the dip polish. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like mint green, but it's definitely on the whiter side, the chalky side. I love a bright nail. I don't like long nails. I don't like fifty million designs. It's just too much. I don't I like. We're twins. Oof. How do you? I eat? feel like we're twins. Like I just feel like I'm talking to myself right now. When's your birthday? February tenth. Are you a Pisces? Aquarius. Oh, that's why. My one of my best friends is an Aquarius. Oh yeah. Got them pretty much alike. By the way, oh, you're right after. Yeah, you're right after Capricorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why. Mm, what is it? What'd you say? We relate to each other. That's why. Yeah. You're right after me. Is there anything else you want to add to this chat before I let you go? No, nope, I think I said it. I'm grateful for you know A and T M was was great. Like, oh, in all fairness, like you know what? You learn a lot. You grow. I love all the girls. It's fun. And at the end of the day, it's reality TV. That you're gonna create a narrative. Who cares? Milk Bye. it. Do what you gotta do. Buy it. It's it's yes. It's, be grateful for the experience. That's it. Own it or sell it. Own it or sell it. Yeah. Pick it. Whatever. Pick one. But if you go if you gonna cry, at least wipe your tears. Wipe your tears with dollars. Listen, wipe them with dollars and wipe them in a bins. Or a <laughs> <laughs> Bianca, I'm sending you positive energy. Everyone watching, send Bianca positive energy, love, and light as we say goodbye to her from giving an amazing, amazing live interview on America's next Bell model, Cycle 13, the Petite Cycle. Yes, yes, thank bye, you. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, baby. amazing that was very amazing it was so inspiring this is definitely one i will watch over and over and over i'm not going to tell you all the ones i watch frequently but there are some that i watch just to get get my spirit feeling well listen guys i love you guys so much for your support shout out to everyone who bought a badge during this chat shout out to everyone on youtube who will do um this little you know the little perks the uh what super chat super chats Thank you guys so much for all the love that you guys sent me. I greatly appreciate it so freaking much. This video will be uploaded to the Oliver Twix YouTube channel. That's Oliver T W I X T YouTube channel where you can find this chat and over 100 of your top model chats and relatable content. Get into it, honey. Get into it. Listen, get Bianca's book. Set my um YouTube on autoplay and just get into the things of the things. We have like a week long, week, maybe two weeks long of content just to consume, baby. Or the free. It's for me. Oh, hey, Shandy. Shout out to Shandy for talking too, girl. She just walked in the building, but girl, I'm going to walk out because I need to get my, get my, keep my day going. I love you guys. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm about to go. Be sure to be safe. Love each other. Take care of each other out there. And last but not least, when it's all said and done, mamas, when it's all said and done, mamas, be sure to what? Parade and Kegel! Until next time, y'all. Bye.